Hey there, there, fellas. Right, our plan today is to convert a car to run on firewood. Here, I have a gas bottle. We'll be using it to make a furnace. Of course, we'll be making a cascade of filters and coolers and all of that. Obviously, it'll be quite interesting to make the generator itself. As in, weld it together and try firing it up before throwing it into a car. We'll be learning hands-on how to produce this flammable gas, all while showing you how it's done. Let's get started. So basically, this is what we're looking at here. I'll be cutting a lid up here to insert the firewood. Since we won't be using this uh, for any sort of daily driving, I mean, that's not what the car is meant to do. I'll be making the fire bar out of this here metal. It's about two, two and a half mil thick, so that should be enough. This here radius at the bottom of our bottle will contain the fire bar, while this support should also turn out to be useful. I'll elongate it a bit using a welder, and it will serve as an ash pan, which will collect all of the waste as an ash. I reckon this will be... By the way, as you can imagine, we're currently doing a rough draft. Anyway, we'll be connecting a pipe right here in order to get our fuel burning. We'll also be welding another pipe on the other side, which will be used for collecting the finished product. It doesn't seem complicated at first glance, so let's find out how hard it is to actually make it happen. Converting a car to run on firewood. Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. One more thing, fellas. If you're cutting a gas bottle to pieces, you actually shouldn't be doing it in the first place. But you know how it goes. When something's inappropriate, but you really want it, then it's appropriate. In order to get everything done properly, you have to unscrew the valve first. After that, you fill the bottle up with some water to eliminate any gas pockets. And afterwards, you can carefully start cutting. Now remember, never ever hack an empty gas bottle. Right, let's keep going. Right, guys. After heaps of work, I mean, let's be honest here, we did have to head out for supplies while we were doing the job. To get some more metal and stuff like pipes, this here lid. We really didn't want to overcomplicate things and invent something new. 
So we ended up buying a jar, which I borrowed the lid from. Anyway, here's what we're looking at. We needed a fan to ignite the fuel and get everything going. The question was, where do we find one? And then it hit me. When I was replacing the motor in my Mercedes, I had a small mini fan which purged the catalytic converter. I wasn't using it since I didn't want to wire the ECU to get it running, so I laid it aside and it sat there for a few years. And finally I can put it to good use. Right, so here we have a battery to get everything going, a plastic tube, which is a temporary measure, as you can imagine. This is actually all for the sake of an experiment to see whether we can get everything running. The smoke coming out of this end here, we'll try to determine whether it's flammable or not, see if it burns. If it doesn't, that means overhauling the whole system. We won't be using firewood yet. I mean, after walking around the garage complex, we couldn't find any. So we drove to the store and bought ourselves some charcoal. As a matter of fact, it should produce somewhat cleaner smoke. It isn't contaminated with anything like tree sap. Yeah, it's mostly tree sap, I presume. I don't know. Anyway, here's the plan. We fill it up, start a fire. The fire starter tube doesn't have a lid on it yet. Sorry, fellas, I've made a wooden cap for the meantime, which we'll use to cover the furnace. We'll cover one tube, as for the other one, as soon as we remove the fan, I meant to say that that's what we'll be using to supply the furnace with air. It might turn out to be oversized, it could turn out to be too small, we don't know that yet. We're looking at a water pipe, I'm guessing about 66 mil in diameter? We just took whatever the metal yard had in stock. Right, enough talk, let's go fire it up. Right, fellas, now it's time for some testing. It has gotten a bit dark, though. It took us a long time to get everything done. Let me just throw it in there. It'll burn anyway. Okay. Let's shove this bag in there, too. Not bad at all. Now we close the lid. Right, now we find some paper. Stick it in here. This is where we start the fire. And now we have to switch the propeller on. Alright, let's get this party started. Looking good so far. There we go. Looking good. Mm -hmm. Look at that. We have some smoke coming through the fan, so now we just wait for everything to start heating up. Maybe I should cover this tube for a more effective draft. Right, guys, so we've got this thing going, we're seeing a bit of smoke, albeit not too much. Take a look. As you can see, this isn't gas from the torch itself. There's quite a big flame, all blue and everything. With a bit of red here and there, of course. Anyway, it doesn't seem to be burning up completely. There you have it. You see? It's burning on its own. If we didn't have any wind, that would be just sweet, wouldn't it? See? Even after removing the torch, it continues to burn. Looks like we've done it. We've successfully obtained some flammable gas. Or monoxide, as they call it. Look at that, it's burning beautifully. We've got a blue flame happening here. This is great. Hopefully this doesn't explode. Nah, that ain't happening. I'm just kidding. Right, excellent. Everything's looking good. Check it out, the bottle's glowing. That's exactly why everything is happening so fast, since we don't have... Actually, the pipe seems to be warmed up. It should be okay by now. Anyway, we've installed a tiny cooler fan to supply the furnace with air. 
When we use this to run an engine, we'll be utilizing the fan to give us a draft. It'll be drawing gas from this here device. Meanwhile, air will be drawn in at the exact rate the motor requires. There you have it. As you can see, everything works. We're looking good. That's what charcoal will do for you. So yeah, it burns. I guess it's time to make a few conclusions. First off, we have to put this all together. Maybe I should put this fire out. Right, so we assemble everything, make a few filters, and install everything onto the car. Alright, so here's where we're at. Yesterday we stayed up pretty late to get this here contraption finished. Everything worked out in the end. As you saw, it does produce exactly the kind of gas that we need. It burns beautifully. Here's what we're going to be doing today. I'll be using an old fire extinguisher to make a cyclone-type centrifugal filter. And after that I'll be using these pipes which we bought at the metal yard. Anyway, we're gonna have to do some welding. These pipes together with a few bends will form a radiator. We don't want to go through the hassle of bending pipes and cutting them with a grinder. That's no fun at all. Anyway, yeah, we've got ourselves a few bends which I'm gonna be welding together. I'm keeping everything separate for the time being. After I prepare everything, I bring the car over here and try slapping it all on. Let's do this. Right, so here's what we end up with. It is a curious looking apparatus, isn't it? Anyway, we're looking good. We were able to fit everything nicely. We moved the tank itself further away since it does get really hot. We don't want to melt the taillights after all. I might actually use some sort of heat shield. We'll install some plastic down the line all the way to the motor. By the way, I found... Actually, I'll show that to you later. It's an interesting Soviet vintage item. Some old dude fabricated it for his Lada. And it'll definitely be useful to our cause. Anyway, fellas, there you have it. For the time being, anyway. Hopefully it'll work okay. Right, that concludes part one, and part two will be coming at you very soon. So watch our videos, subscribe, leave some comments and suggestions. Later, guys!